Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James Oldfield here with you, and we're glad that you are with us tonight. That was some pretty interesting discussion on uh, what does the Bible say before this, uh, but we hope you will uh, stay tuned in. We're going to be having some uh, good discussion tonight about some topics that I thought were pretty interesting going on in our society today that will be relevant, I believe, to what's going on in the religious world today. But before we get started, we want to give you our content information a word from the Lord at gmail.com, 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me. Of course, we'll have the phone lines up um, uh, after a while where you can call in uh, live and uh, with your Bible discussions and, and questions and comments. Uh, we want to uh, give you that opportunity because we are interested in dialogue and want to know that we'll study the Bible with you anytime. And so uh, please feel free to uh, uh, contact me or visit with us. We meet at 250 the Boulevard in Eden. We have Bible study on Thursday nights at 7. And we have uh, uh, worship at nine, uh, 10 o'clock on Sundays. Uh, Bible studies at 9 on Sundays. And so 9 and 10 on Sundays, 7 o'clock on Thursdays. And we'd be glad to uh, uh, see you there anytime that you have the opportunity to come and visit with us. Friends, we're going to make an uh, announcement that I hope uh, will get you excited. Uh, starting in September, starting in September, uh, a word from the Lord is also going to be on the radio, and we're going to be broadcasting from uh, WLOE and WMYN in May Mayadan, and it's going to be a live call-in program, just same format as this, uh, and it's going to start September the 3rd, and it's going to be a live call-in. It's going to be Sundays, Sunday afternoons at 5 p.m., so we want you to uh, get ready for that. Now, if you are... Um, watching uh, let's say online you're watching online and you say well I'd, I'd like to know how to get to that well you can download the the Rockingham County radio app if you'll just go to your Google store or whatever it is iPhone whatever and just uh, look for rocking type in Rockingham County radio and you'll see a, a, um, a little yellow icon this is RCR on it download that and this is gonna be streaming live this um, live streaming uh, uh, audio and eventually we're going to get video going but starting uh, September the 3rd at 5 p.m. we're going to have a live call-in radio program so just another way where you can uh, uh, participate in the Bible studies with us and uh, we hope that you will tell your friends and family about that I know some of you are watching online uh, you don't have cable some of you uh, f uh, folks in Rockingham County even don't don't have cable you have satellite so if you know someone's got satellite uh, dish where you can tell them, hey, you can listen to it on your iPhone or your uh, iPad or whatever uh, electronic device you have. Download this app and you can uh, watch and listen. Also, if you are, uh, let's say, in Rockingham County and you don't have cable, and I'll talk to a lot of people that, and, you know, uh, uh, they can't get Star News even on their uh, uh, Time Warner cable. You know, I don't know if you need to upgrade your box or something like that, uh, but anyway, this is one way that you can you can uh, uh, get a word from the Lord Sundays at 5 p.m. starting September 3rd. So be ready for that. So we hope that you will uh, put that on your calendar and, and uh, get ready to have a Bible study with us in that venue as well. So just another way we're trying to get the, the, the word out. <clears throat> I want to start off with tonight with this verse, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 9. Solomon said, The thing that hath been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. People are always repeating themselves. It's like there's nothing really new in what man does. Man seems to be doing something new, but really all he does is he just reinvents other ways, or he reinvents ways that men have been worshiping or doing whatever uh, since the time began. In other words, there's really nothing new, maybe just a different way to do it, but the same... Uh, applies all through history and especially when it comes to worship. You know, when you're reading in the Bible and you're reading in the Old Testament especially, and I love the Old Testament because it gives you principles, some gives you some, some application, some uh, illustrations on how God does things or how he treats people. And there's a lot of value in studying the Old Testament. Paul said in Romans 15 and verse 4, the things written for time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scripture might have hope. And so there's a lot of, of benefit to studying the Old Testament because you get to see how things were done, how people uh, re, uh, reacted to God's word, how they treated God's uh, message and messengers, 
and how God dealt with obedience and disobedience and faithfulness and things like that. And so when you look at that and you're looking from, at the Old Testament in the eyes of or in the light of what's going on today, you'll see, you know what? There's a lot of things that are just the same. The more things change, the more they remain the same, as the saying goes. And so that's definitely true when it comes to worship. I want you to consider one of the aspects of Old Testament worship, or how people worship in the Old Testament, had to do with the high places. Now, if you're reading in the Bible, uh, in the King James, you, you read about the high places. And the high places were places of worship, usually on mountains or hills, some elevated position, and I don't know why. Maybe it was because they were, they were closer to God or thought they were closer to God. You may recall in, in the book of Genesis uh, when uh, the uh, men were going to build a, a tower to heaven in Genesis chapter 11, uh, verse 1, beginning of verse 1, it says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed uh, from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, uh, Go to, let us make brick, let us turn, uh, burn them thoroughly. And they made brick for stone, and slime they had for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower, whose top may reach into the heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. So they're, they're going to build this tower. They're going to build this uh, uh, tower to make a name for themselves. And I suppose that that tower had to do something with their, their preeminence, or maybe... They were trying to get closer to the, the gods or they're trying to worship. I don't really know. But all through history, you seem to find that people used elevated places for worship. And that was no different than the Old Testament. Now, in, uh, in the time of the conquest, the children of Israel came into the, the land of, of Canaan. They had the tabernacle with them. And the tabernacle was set up at Shiloh at first, before the temple was built in Jerusalem. The tabernacle was at Shiloh in Joshua uh, 18. Joshua 18 and verse 1 says, And the whole congregation of children of Israel assembled uh, together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of the congregation there. And the land was subdued before them. So the tabernacle was at Shiloh and uh, the people were worshiping. They, they would bring their sacrifices and so forth to the tabernacle. But still, there was worship being done in the high places. Now, it was not always to idols. It was not always to, to pagan worship. <clears throat> um, if you'll notice in uh, uh, 1 Samuel, for example, 1 Samuel chapter uh, 9, uh, you have uh, Saul, and he's going to meet Samuel. And let's see if I can find here, I think it's about verse uh, 9, verse 10. They're coming to find Samuel, uh, verse 11. As they went up to the hill to the city, they found young maidens going to draw water, and they said, Is the seer here? And they answered and said, He is, uh, to them, He is. Behold, He is before you. Make haste uh, now, for He came today uh, to the city, for there's a sacrifice uh, of the people in the high, today in the high places. So Samuel, the prophet of God, he's, he's offering sacrifice in the high places. But this is uh, characteristic of this time when they're, they're going to their places of worship. And so Israel, they begin worshiping in these high places, because, and that's typical of what was going on in the nations round about them. Look at Numbers 33. Numbers 33 and verse 51. Now we're getting to a point here. I want to, I want to lay out how the high places were used. Numbers 33 and verse 51. Speaking to the children of Israel, and say unto them, When are ye uh, when are ye passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan? Then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quiet pluck down all their high places. And ye shall dis, uh, dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it, and ye shall divide the land uh, by lot for an inheritance among your families, and the more ye shall uh, give, the more inheritance, and to the fewer ye shall uh, give less inheritance, so forth. So, they were to drive out the inhabitants of the land, plug down their, their altars in the high places. Now notice, verse 55, And if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that, they, uh, that these which uh, ye let remain 
shall be uh, uh, pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and ye, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. So, if you don't do what God says, all these things are going to come back to haunt you. And so one of the things that, uh, I say one of the, the, the consequences of not driving out all the inhabitants of the land was, all the inhabitants of the land and their places of worship started influencing the children of Israel. One of the influences that, that uh, they had on the children of Israel was this worship in the high places, and especially worship to idols or, or pagan gods. Now, as you come on down through time, this is the time of, of Joshua, and then you go through the judges, and then you come to the, the kingdom. Saul became king, then you had David became king, and then you had Solomon become king over the United Kingdom. That's when Israel and Judah were all together. And Solomon is even worshiping in the high places. So all through this time, you can see the worship in the high places. 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 1 through 4. Solomon made an affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Uh, only the people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord uh, until these days. And Solomon uh, uh, loved the Lord walking in the statutes of David his father only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeah to sacrifice there, that there was a great high place, a thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. So here was a, a very uh, monumental or a great place of, of worship where they offered his sacrifices to the Lord. Now, God told his people that when they came into the land, he was going to choose a place to put his name there. And this would be the place where they were come to come and, and worship him. This would be the place where they would come and, and offer up sacrifices uh, to him. And so uh, that is going to be in Jerusalem. Let's, let's read uh, Deuteronomy 12 and verse 8. Deuteronomy 12 and verse 8. Ye shall not do after the things that ye do here this day, every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes. All right, God says, don't, don't be doing this, for ye are not as yet come to rest uh, to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. But when you go over to Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord uh, your God giveth you to inherit, and you shall giveth you rest from your enemies round about, so that ye dwell in safety... Then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither shall ye bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices and your tithes and your heave offerings uh, of your hand and all your choice vows which ye vow unto the, unto the Lord. All right, so God said, I'm going I'm to pick a place. And that's where you bring all these sacrifices. But until this time... He hasn't really put his name there. He hadn't really chosen a name. That place was going to be Jerusalem. So up until this time, worshiping the high places was uh, was accepted by God, uh, unless, of course, it was offered to, to pagan gods. But now Solomon has built the temple in Jerusalem, and this is where God chose to put his name. In 1 first, first Kings 14 and verse 21, and Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 40 and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name uh, there. All right? So Jerusalem was the city that God chose. So once God has chosen this now, there's no reason to be worshiping in the high places. There's no reason to be going to all these different hills or elevated positions to worship God. This is the place that God says, bring your tithes, your offerings, your sacrifices, and your vows that you vow. You bring them to Jerusalem. Now, this is why it's important. Because once you have God's will on the matter, this should be the end of it. It, should, it eliminates all the other high places. But this is how people do today, friends. This is exactly how people do today. 
They say, well, we're going to still worship in the high places. Even though God has told what he wants, even though God has set forth in his word how he wants to worship, where he wants to worship, where he wants you to worship, we're still going to do it our own way. Because notice what happens. In 1 Kings 14, verse 21, we just read, God put his name in Jerusalem. That's, what, that's the name he chose, the city he chose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. But look at verse 22. Uh, and Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins which they committed above all their uh, all that their fathers had done. Verse 23. For they also built them high places and images and groves on every high hill and under every green tree. There were also uh, there were also sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Well, that sounds exactly like what's going on today. Even though God has specified what he wants, even though God has specified how he wants to be worshipped, men still come along and they build their high places and they do whatever they want to do. Even though God said, when you come to the land, you're not going to do every man that's right in his own eyes. Deuteronomy 12. But what do they do? They still do every man what's right in his own eyes. And so I submit to you that the high places where they worship idols and groves and graven images and molten images and the sodomites did what they wanted to do, I submit to you that's exactly what people do today. Doesn't it sound that way? Does it sound like we have some modern high places today in our country? Have some modern high places where people go and worship God and do what they want to do even though God has specified clearly in his word what he wants? Let me give you an example of some modern day high places where people are doing what they want to do. <clears throat> now this is, some of these are, 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 are several years old, but just to give you an example of how uh, very much like in, in the days when people were doing what they want to do in their high places, look at this. New Church in Virginia, White Tail Chapel, invites you to bear more than your naked soul. Now, I wasn't about to show you a video of this, uh, but it goes to show you people are doing anything. And they're doing it in the name of religion, the name of worship. Oh, yeah, they want to love God. Let's just go take all our clothes off. Well, doesn't that sound like one of the high places that you might find in the Old Testament? People doing what they want to do, the sodomites doing the abominations that they want to do. Or what about the Bar Church? We've talked about this before, the Bar Church. Abilene, Texas. Actually, it's sponsored by so-called Church of Christ, not not really. Uh, it's a Church of Christ in name only, you might say, Southern Thrills. But the Bar Church, they're, they're doing what they want to do. They're doing what they want to do, uh, even to the point of, uh, well, they're just doing what they want to do. Listen to what the Bar Church has to say. All right, no judgment. Sorry, it's buffering there. No judgment. Uh, you can come to the bar church and not feel, uh, you know, like you're being judged or criticized or whatever. Well, that's that's a bar, isn't it? We're not really concerned about worshiping God. Now, uh, these individuals, one of them, one of the, one of the men that uh, was actually doing some talking here was. Uh, saying he was a recovering alcoholic. And I'm wondering, how in the world do you go to a bar church, recovering alcoholic, I believe he was said he was actually on probation too. How do you go to church and you're on probation? See, how, is, how does that work? There's a few bar churches, a place where anyone's welcome. And there's no judgment. There's no reason why anyone wouldn't be welcome. It's a place where you're comfortable to worship to intersect with other hearts in a way that, that you might not ever get the opportunity otherwise, but this place, it brings people together that wouldn't normally intersect with each other. I tell other people, 
Jesus will be hanging out in the bar church. Now, where did they get that? Where do you get the idea that Jesus will be hanging out in the bar church? See, all of these things that people are doing in these high places, they don't get it from the Word. They don't get it from the Bible. They don't get it from a source that you know is from God. They have to attribute things to God that God never said, God never did, God never even thought of. All right? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The way you strengthen your faith is by getting the Bible, not by going to a bar church where you feel, you think, you whatever. You don't bog down in doctrine. That See, you see what I'm talking about? This is a high place that, hey, we'll do what I want to do. So we're all about acceptance. So been in prison, on parole, and here he is. Let's go to a bar church. How, how do you how do you get to go to a bar if you're on parole? You know, I mean, is, is that legal? Now, my point is for this, friends. People are worshiping in their own high places. They're doing what they want to do. They're doing the things that they think God wants. Look at another high place. Look at this. Sunday assembly, a church for the godless, picks up steam. We've talked about this before too. Here's a church where they don't even worship God, but yet they're under the guise of church, right? The idea of of, of religious setting. This church was uh, founded by two comedians, right? They're just they're just making fun, making light of of religion. But hey, if it, you know whatever the church of your choice, I guess makes sense. Uh, Here's another one. This is one uh, pretty recently. This is the L- the International Church of Cannabis. All right? And it's Elevation Ministries. Now, friends, if you don't see the, the, uh, uh, the puns or the irony in that, then I'm sorry. But Elevation Ministry, the high places... In the Old Testament, they worshiped in the high places. That's right. The cannabis church is elevation ministries. They worshiped in the elevated places. So they're getting high in their high place. Now listen what about the church of, of cannabis. Listen to what they say about the church of cannabis.
I'm in the midst of unprecedented secondhand cannabis smoke. Playing very well. That is the founder of it, and I'm uh, trying to figure out why the audio is not coming through very well on this. But do you see, friends, where we're going here? Anything goes. God said you will not do every man as he pleases in his own eyes. But yet that is exactly what they did. And that's exactly what they're doing today at the International uh, Church of Cannabis. Uh, doing, doing their own thing. I have an article that I want to read. This is from, this is a write-up about the International Church of Cannabis. And let's just see what, what it has to say here. It says... This uniquely this unique community for those who consume cannabis also means achieving self-discovery. Founder member Steve Burke told the cannabis in an exclusive interview and tour of the church, members known as elevationists claim no theology or authoritarian structure, he said. So that they're just doing what they want to do. No theology. It's not about it's not about God. So it's really not a church, it's really not a religion. But Yet they are doing it under the guise of, well, we want to smoke pot. Now, there they say, the evolutionist goal is creating the best version of themselves. We believe cannabis accelerates and deepens that process. So it's all about the weed. It's all, they're, they're worshiping the weed. That's what they're doing. He says, Burke goes on to say, Burke and founding members of the elevation of the elevationists, remember the high places, they're, they're getting high in their high places, who spoke to the cannabis insisted that their nascent religion is not a social club masquerading as a church to avoid state prohibitions on open and public consumption of marijuana. These restrictions are outlined in Amendment 64, the state voter approved 2012 ballot initiative that legalized recreational pot, but Initiative 300, passed by Denver voters in November, opens the doors to social use in consumption zones operated by permitted businesses. So, is it a business <clears throat> or is it a church? Seems to me like this is a way to get around the law. We've, we found a loophole here. And it's a way that we can, we can consume marijuana even though the state has pro prohibited it in, in open areas like this. Now, he just said there's no theology, but yet right here he's, they're talking about it. it's a religion. Oh, it's a religion. It's not, it's not just masquerading uh, as a religion. It's not a social club masquerading as a religion. This is a real religion. We're, we're in a church building. It's our high place. Do you see what we're saying, then, friends? It is clearly a... a uh, modern day high place where they are simply indulging and doing whatever they want to do. Now, Burke is blunt. Again, with the puns, really. We're entirely within our First Amendment rights to practice our religion in this building. Well, it's all about exercising our right to religion. Really? Is that really what it is? You're practicing your rights as religion? You want to consume marijuana? Well, why can't you do it in your home? No. What we want to do is we want to flaunt it. We want to uh, put it in your face. We want to do everything we can to circumvent the law so to elevate the use of, of, of this drug. Doing what is right in their own eyes. This is their own high place. Now, friends, can you not see this is exactly what was going on in, in the Old Testament? in their own high places. They were doing whatever they wanted to do. And they were doing it under the guise of, well, it makes me feel good. I'm sure, I'm sure, and if we could go back in, into the days of the kings, or the days of the judges, we would hear someone say, well, you know, it's my right. You know, I can, I can worship God the way I want to worship. I can worship any God I want to. 
If I want to worship Baal, I will. If I want to worship Ashtaroth, I will. If I want to worship Chemosh, I will. If I want to worship Molech, I will. Well, how are you going to do it? I'm going to build my own high place. Now, here's where we're going. Here's where we're getting to, friends. Anything goes in their high places because we're going to call it a religion and we're going to call it worship and we're going to do what we please. Here's another headline. Building registered as a church is actually a swingers club with naughty nights, the city says. This is in Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Right in the heart of the Bible Belt. If there's any place where you would you should not find something like this, it would be in Tennessee. But right there it is. Oh, well what about this? The Nashville, Tennessee building registered as a church has been used as a sex club for swingers, investigators say, after a graphic report from undercover inspectors. The city of Nashville has filed a complaint against the owners of the social club for quote, maintaining a public nuisance by permitting acts of lewd conduct and violating a state law banning sex clubs from operating within a thousand feet of a school. The longtime downtown swingers club owned by Freedom for All Incorporated, again, it's because we want to be free here, underwent a conversion in 2015 when it relocated to a rundown office park in the community of Madison, calling itself Listen, calling itself a church because the new location is near the back of the private Good Pasture Christian School uh, there in Nashville. So what are we going to do? Well, I tell you what, let's just call it a church. Let's just call it religion. Let's just let's just operate under the guise of a church so that we can do what we want to do. Now, friends, the the uh, you know the 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 cannabis church that's over there smoking their joints for Jesus, you know, they can say that, but really that's what they're doing. They're using the guise of religion to do what they want to do. Freedom to do what they want to do. They can call it marijuana for the Messiah, and, and that's, you know, everybody will be fine. Hey, that's just a great church. No, that is just a license to do what you want to do. Have no regard whatsoever for getting back to God. Oh, it's a religion, but we don't really have any theology other than smoking the wacky weed. You see what we're coming to, friends? This is what we're talking about. The world is, is basically building their own high places to do whatever they want to do. And, friends, the problem that we have is going to be the same problem that they had in the, in the Bible days. In the days of the kings, when everybody was worshiping in their own high place, doing their own thing, doing whatever they want to do, guess what they were going to do? They were going to start having problems and the people were going to have a tough time distinguishing between what is right and what is wrong because the lines are getting blurred. Remember what God said? If you don't drive out the inhabitants of the land and you don't pull down their high places, it's going to vex you. Now friends, this is the very reason why we're doing what we're doing. We're trying to show you that if everybody does what's right in their own eyes, everybody gets to do whatever they want to do, then there's going to be problems distinguishing between what is truth and what's not. What is really the high place and what is really true worship? I mean, after all, it used to be that men like Samuel were over here worshiping in high places, offering up sacrifices. Solomon himself <clears throat> went up to Gibeah and offered a thousand sacrifices on the altar in a high place there. So how is it now <clears throat> that we're going to differentiate between true worship and what is used for idols. Look at 1 Kings 11 and verse 7. 1 Kings 11 and verse 7. Here we have Solomon. Solomon built a, then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Well, what is that going to do for the children of Israel? What is that going to do later on for generation to come? Well, guess what? In chapter 12, in chapter 13, you meet a man named Jeroboam. And guess what Jeroboam does? Jeroboam comes along in 1 Kings chapter 12 
And uh, we let's uh, look at verse uh, twenty six. Jeroboam said in his heart, "Now God has given him ten tribes, given Jeroboam ten tribes of the of the twelve tribes of Israel." And here's what Jeroboam said. Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord of Jerusalem, then shall the heart of all the people turn again unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold, the gods of Israel which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set one of them in Bethel, and the other put him in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. Well, why was that such a strange thing? It wasn't. Solomon had already put, uh, uh, built uh, places of worship in the high places to um, Molech and Chemosh. Why would it be so strange for Jeroboam to come along and put him in Bethel and Dan? I mean, they're right there on the city, uh, the hills outside of Jerusalem that Solomon put. It is not a strange thing. When people get accustomed to seeing pagan worship, when they get accustomed to seeing things like this, then it, it becomes commonplace. And they get used to it, accustomed to it. That's why, friends, when you say, when people say, well, that's how a church is smoke cannabis. Let's legalize drugs. Let's legalize marijuana. Let's legalize alcohol. When you start legalizing things that are immoral and ungodly, guess what you have? You have people imbibing in them. You have people partaking in them because it is more com it's commonplace. It's easier to ac easier access. And that's where you have Jeroboam come with, with this golden cash in Bethlehem Dan. All right? And it's not a far stretch, and the people don't think anything about it because Solomon put, put uh, uh, two high places right outside of Jerusalem. See what we're talking about here? And not only this, look how the high places come into to, uh, play here. He made a house of high places, and he made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month and the fifteenth day of the month. Uh, like the feast that is in Judah and offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. Now notice. And he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even the month which he had devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. And he offered upon the altar... And he used, um, my point is he used the priests that were of the high places. The priests of the high places. Now, friends, if the high places had been destroyed, like God said, they wouldn't have come back to vex the people. But the high places were still being used. And so, the people start using them for their own purposes. Look at this in 1 Kings, 1 Kings 19 and verse 14. <clears throat> this is what Elijah says I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant thrown down thine altars and slain <clears throat> thy prophets with the sword now here's my point how do you know what was an altar to the Lord and an altar to pagan gods there has to be some distinction. That's my point. You can tell the difference. You can know the difference. But when things start happening and people start worshiping after their own ideas, their own desires, then pretty soon people start clouding the waters. The, the, the lines get blurred. And you go, well, I don't really know what's a, a place of true worship or what's a place for worship of idols. And so here's Elijah going, well, they tore down your altar, so they must have known what an, altar, what an altar to the Lord was versus the altars of the high places that were used for pagan worship. And so, true worship or high places, how do you know the difference? Well, friends, people who look and examine, they know the differences. Now, if you don't, you may have a difficulty seeing the difference. Now, I submit to you, there's a lot of people 
that are going to be just like Rabshakeh. Now listen to what happened. In 2 Kings 18 verse 4, let me hurry through this. 2 Kings 18 verse 4. <clears throat> Hezekiah removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and broke in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it and he and he called it Nehushtan. Alright, so he, he tore down the graven images, the, the groves and the graven images and the high places. Removed the high places. Now, when Rapshaki comes along, Rapshaki is a servant, he's like a general, in the army of the Assyrian king. And listen to what Rabshakeh says. Rabshakeh said unto them, Speak ye now to Hezekiah, thus at the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein ye trusted? Thou sayest, but they are but vain words, Thou sayest, I have counsel and strength for the war. Now, on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Now, behold, thou trustest upon the staff of this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which the, if a man lean it will uh, go into his hand and pierce, into it, uh, pierce to it. So the king of Pharaoh, so is Pharaoh the king of Egypt to all that trust in him. Look at verse 22. But if ye say unto me, we trust in the Lord our God, is not, he, is not that he whose high places and altars Hezekiah hath taken away? Hezekiah didn't take away the high places and altars of the Lord. He took away the high places and altars of false worship. But Rapture comes along and goes, Oh, yeah, Hezekiah tore down the altars of God. Friends, that's exactly what people today do. They look and they see all these denominations, all these churches of men, and they go, Oh, those are all places of worship to the true and living God. That's wrong. Wrong. You're just as wrong as Rapture was. What Hezekiah tore down was not uh, legitimate places of worship to God. They were worshiping false gods. And yet, Rapsky didn't see the difference. Now, friends, when you see people mocking Christianity and, and making fun of Christianity, you know why? It's because they look and they see all the crazy things that are going on under the name of Christianity in all these so-called high places, and they ridicule and, make, and scoff and make fun of the truth because they can't tell the difference between the true worshipers of God and these people that are building their own high places. See, they're making mockery. They make mockery of the truth. And so, the high places, the high places need to be torn down. I'm saying, friends, we can tell the difference. And that's exactly where denominations are. They are modern day high places. People worship any way they choose, any place they choose, do anything they want to, and they say, well, it's because I feel good. I think God would be here. Jesus would be here drinking a beer with me. Jesus would be over here smoking a joint, right? Yeah, we got cannabis for Christ. Hey, let's light it up. No, friends. But, but who are we to say? We can't say, oh, no, that's wrong, right? We can't say that's wrong. We've got to be politically correct here. After all, after all, right? The church of your choice. I'm sure back in the day, back in the, in the Bible time, somebody's over there going, hey, hey, attend the high place of your choice. You know, Prophet Billy Graham, Prophet, Prophet Billy Graham, he'd be saying, well, you know, one high place is just as good as another. As long as you believe that your sacrifice is going to God, hey, just go to the high place of your choice. Sounds the same, doesn't it? Nothing new under the sun. Friends, do you really believe one place is just as good as another? Do you really believe one church is just as good as another? Do you believe one high place is just as good as another? Look at this. In Jeremiah 7, verse 29. In Jeremiah 7, verse 29. Jeremiah says, Cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take up a lamentation on, on high places, for the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of, of this wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, said the Lord. They have set their abomination in the house which is called by my name to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, 
to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. God says they're building places of worship, and I never even thought about it. I never even thought about them doing what they're doing. Now, friends, if one church is just as good as another, then one high place is just as good as another. See? If one church is just as good as another, why don't you go to the cannabis church? Why don't you go to the first international church of cannabis? Why don't you do that? Why don't you go to the naked church out there in Virginia? Why don't you go to the bar church and get drunk after Sunday service? That's what they do. How can you condemn these things? Well, we're doing what we want to do. Okay. You can't, you can't say we're wrong. Oh, really? Are you going to say the cannabis church is wrong? The naked church is wrong? The swinging church is wrong? The devil church is wrong? I mean, where do you draw the line? See? It's just like it was. Just like Solomon said, nothing new under the sun. That which was done is going to be done again. One high place is just as good as another. Listen, God told his people to tear down the high places. He said, when you come to land, you plug it down, you pull it down. You tear it down. Because they're going to be a snare if you don't. Deuteronomy 12. Deuteronomy 12. These are the statutes and the judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land which the Lord, thy God, uh, the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it all the days that ye live upon the earth. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountains and upon the hills and under every green tree. And ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images uh, of their gods and destroy the, the names of them out of this place that ye not do so unto the Lord. Ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God. Destroy the names out of the place. Friends, people say, y'all just hard on all these denominations. You know what, friends? All we're trying to do is tear down high places that don't have any reason to exist. And those people that love God, just like back in the day, they did not worship at the high places. All of the northern kingdom, Israel, was given over to idolatry. But notice what the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 11. 2 Chronicles 11 and verse 13. The priests and the Levites that were in all Israel, that's the northern kingdom, resorted to him out of all their coasts. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possessions and came to Judah and Jerusalem for Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. And he ordained him priests for the high places and for the uh, devils and for the calves which he had made. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice to the Lord God of their fathers. The people that loved God left all of these high places that were worshiping false gods and they came to worship the true and living God where he said worship me. Friends, this is where we are today. This is where we are today. Our job, our job is to help you come out of all these high places that men have erected in the name or in the idea of worshiping God that God never even thought of. God never even thought about it. You say, well, well, James, where did God set his name today? Where, where does God want to be worshipped today? Is there a certain location? No. Not a specific location. Jesus said this. In John 4, John 4 and verse, <clears throat> uh, let's start at verse 22. Uh, Jesus tells the woman at the well. The woman says, uh, Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither worship in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem. Worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh the now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. You know where Christ said worship? He said it's not a certain spot as far as in this mountain or in Jerusalem. 
but it is in a certain spot as in the church. God receives worship. God receives worship in the church. And friends, that's exactly why we're doing this. In Ephesians 3, verse 21, Unto Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. All men. God receives glory in the church. The church that His Son died for. Acts 20 and verse 28. The, the church of God which He hath purchased with His own blood. The church that belongs to Christ. Matthew 16, 18. Upon this rock I'll build my church. Jesus said it belongs to Him. That is where God receives glory. If you want to worship God, you need to be in the church of Christ. You need to come out of these high places that men have erected and built up to worship a false God, to uh, uh, worship God in a very perverted and, and corrupt manner. Come out from among them. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to destroy and tear down all the doctrines that are going to destroy men's souls. Friends, you have to understand, we're doing this out of love. That is our job. Our job is to tear down these high places, just like God told His people back then. Tear down the high places or they'll become a snare to you. They will vex you. So are we today. We are pulling down all the high places. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5. 10 Chronicles 10 verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Friends, if we can tear down a man-made doctrine and save one soul, it'll be worth it. If we can help, if we can help you see that the church you're in is not in this book, it'll be worth it. Now, friends, we're not talking about tearing down churches, going and burnt, blowing up buildings and pulling down statues and things like that. That's not how we operate. But we're operating this way, by bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We're going to work on your hearts. We're going to work on your minds. We're going to work on your reasoning abilities to help you see what the will of God is. That's how we'll pull down all these things. That's how we'll pull down these high places, by convincing people through the Word the truth of God's will and showing how man-made doctrines are so completely contrary to it. Friends, that's how we're going to pull it down. That's how we're going to pull down all of these high places that men have built up. In 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 33, listen, you're going to have to prepare your heart. You're going to have to prepare your heart. If you don't, you'll never leave the high places. In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 33, the Bible says, Howbeit the high places were not taken away, for as yet the people had not prepared their hearts unto the God of their fathers. You know why all these churches of men exist? <clears throat> you know why things like the cannabis church can even be thought of? You know why it can be accepted in a society? It's because people have not prepared their hearts to tear down everything that's contrary to the will of God and submit themselves to God. In Romans 6 and verse 17, Romans 6 and verse 17, Paul says, let's start in verse 16. He says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself service to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey? whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were uh, the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. It starts with your heart. It starts with your mindset, friends. Will you be honest about where you are in your uh, attempt to worship God, will you be honest with yourself? With yourself, can you find in this book <clears throat> the church you're in? Can you find a Baptist church, a Methodist church, a Lutheran church, Presbyterian church, Episcopalian church? Can you find it? Now you may be saying, "Well, church doesn't matter." 
Well, if it doesn't matter, then why are you in the church you're in? If it doesn't matter, why won't you go to the cannabis church? If it doesn't matter, why don't you go to the swingers church? It must matter or you wouldn't be where you are. You say, well, I like the music there. Then it matters. Then it matters. Something they're doing matters to you. So church does matter, but does it matter enough for you to leave a church that God never said anything about? Does it matter enough to you to open up God's Word and say, I'm going to see if I can find that. Friends, the $1,000 reward is still there. Still being offered. $1,000 reward. Find a man-made church in the Bible. Find, find more than one kind of church in this book that God wants you to be in. There's only one. The church of Christ. The church of God. One and the same. Now, the church of God denomination, headquarters in Cleveland, Tennessee, is not in this book. The, what they practice, what they teach, is not in this book. Find the church you're in. Find what it practices. Find what it teaches. Find its name. Find its doctrine. Find it in this book. And if you can find more than the, than the church of Christ, friends, that's, that's your thousand dollars right there. But God wants you to worship Him in spirit and truth, friends. And it means coming to the place where He'll be worshipped. That is in the church of His only begotten Son. Friends, that's why we're <clears throat> tearing down these high places. Trying to get you to come out from among them. Those that have prepared their hearts, they're the ones <clears throat> they're the ones that God is looking for. They're the ones that, that uh, God uh, uh, are, is looking for and who will truly find God. If we can help you, friends, we want to do that very thing. We are in the business of tearing down denominations, tearing down the high places that men think they're worshiping God, but they're really not. Friends, we just can't say it enough. We want to help you. We want to talk to you. We want to study with you. And if we can help you, we'll do that very thing. I want to remind you before I go, starting in September, September 3rd, the first Sunday in September, starting in September, live call-in radio program. Sundays at 5 p.m. on uh, <clears throat> 1490 and 1420 a.m. Rockingham County Radio. You can go download the app. Uh, at uh, go to Rockingham County Radio you'll find the app, download it boom, simple as that you can listen to it on your phone, driving down the road you can listen to it uh, on your computer you can listen to it or tune in on the radio you can listen to it but call in, we'll have the phone lines open same, same format as you're seeing right here same Bible study just another way to give you an opportunity to study God's word with us and help us bring into captivity every imagination and thought into the captivity of Christ, the obedience to Christ. Friends, we love you. We love you enough to do all that we can to bring the gospel to you. If you want to study with us, meet with us at 250 the Boulevard. Uh, we'll be glad to see you there. If you're in the Martinsville area, 823 Starling Avenue, Danville, 120 American Legion, we're, we're the people that want to study the Bible with you. If we can help you, we want to do that very thing. Friends, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm going to sign off. Just got a few seconds left here. Until next time, always remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You get a word from the Lord. Have a good night.